Hello, my name is Brian Whitmarsh, and uh, I have a passion for aviation. Uh, my dad was a private pilot, and uh, ever since I was a kid, I always wanted to fly. And uh, finally, uh, just a year and a half ago, back in uh, June of 2019, uh, I received my uh, single engine private pilot's license. And uh, since then, you know, I started off, you know, 172, like probably most of you did uh, when you were taking your training. Uh, I then uh, got my performance endorsement, uh, so now I fly a 182. Uh, I fly out of uh, the Buell Airport here, I uh, live in Hagerman, Idaho. And um, I have about 170 hours now, so you know I'm a new pilot, I'm learning every time I go up. And uh, I really wanted to get my tailwheel endorsement. And, uh, you know, if you looked at my YouTube channel subscription list, right, you would see all the Flying Cowboys, you would see Aviation 101, uh, you'd see the Blanco Larry, um, tons of different uh, aviation. I, my family gets sick of me always watching YouTube videos on flying, but hey, you know, we all have our problems. Uh, anyways, what I wanted to do is just, from a layman's perspective, here is a, you know, kind of a low hour uh, new pilot uh, learning how to fly a tailwheel. And um, I started off this, I'm going to start you off kind of in session two. Session one uh, was really me uh, going out with the instructor. First of all, before you go out, right, you learn, you do a little groundwork and you learn about the scary uh, monster, right, the, uh, the ground loop monster. Uh, because in a tailwheel versus a tricycle, what you learn, tricycle, they're fairly stable. Um, from a tailwheel perspective, those wheels um, put the center of gravity in front of the pilot. So imagine it's like riding a tricycle backwards and uh, you've got this tailwheel thing that has a mind of its own and you really need to be on top of uh, the rudder pedals and uh, you always, you know, especially a new pilot, you have this fear of ground looping. Um, I'm starting off uh, learning in a mall. Um, this is a 1969 mall. Uh, Strata rocket, uh, and it's got the uh, 220 horse Franklin uh, motor in it. And uh, very excited about taking these lessons. Again, started off some ground school. First lesson, I you know I did some taxiing up and down the runway just to try to keep it uh, straight. And uh, pick it, we'll pick it up here in session two, where I'll do um, some actual fast taxis. I'll do some fun 360s, which is a blast to do in a tailwheel. Uh, and then just kind of watch you walk you through uh, my progress in getting my tailwheel endorsement. Now, purpose, you know, I want to, first of all, tailwheel, I've already discovered it makes you a way better pilot. Uh, you know, I took for granted how coordinated a Cessna 172 and 182 fly, right? You're not constantly worried about uh, rudder control and getting the ball in the middle. It's pretty easy to stay coordinated. Uh, not so much in this mall, and it's definitely making me a better pilot. Um, landings, takeoffs, everything, you know, attention to detail and making sure that you're very coordinated um, and you're staying on top of, you know, kind of dancing on the rudder, rudder, rudder pedals as you hear uh, other people talk about. I love to, I love, I live in Idaho, so I love the backcountry and um, I want to gain some more experience. And, you know, I've, I've done a few backcountry flights, um, pseudo backcountry, get into the backcountry uh, here from Buell. Uh, Smiley Creek is just a hop over um, some tall mountains, so you have to be very careful. High density altitude, uh, but a, you know, Smiley is a great uh, landing strip, grass landing strip, 4,000, 5,000 feet long. I've uh, landed at uh, Camus, which is a you know a dirt runway, not really backcountry, but it's, uh, it's got a great restaurant next to it. Uh, the Wrangler, if you ever go to Camus, uh, and then I've landed in Pine, which is just a kind of a, a rough uh, dirt strip. Uh, next to the Anderson Reservoir. Uh, but before I really get into to more backcountry, obviously I want a lot more training and want to be prepared for that. Uh, but this is my uh, progress going through and getting my tailwheel endorsement. I hope you enjoy it. I'm not a YouTuber, so these aren't great shots. These are more just raw footage. Um, and I'll give you a little bit of uh, commentary as to what's going on in my head and what's going on outside the airplane. Thank you. Hope you enjoy it. All right, here's the mall. M4 Strata rocket that I am flying with and doing my training out of the Buell Airport, Uniform 03. Starting off with some taxi practice, uh, it's a unique feeling. The first time a tricycle geared pilot flies a tailwheel and hits the throttle and pushes the nose forward. You know, you're kind of hesitant, you're worried about that thing. Prop hitting the ground, it's a weird feeling, you got to really be dancing on the rudders here. First time 
I get over to the left, didn't do enough right rudder to start off with, so the P-factor pushed me over to the left, and then I made a too big of correction when I went too far left to the right, and instructor had to save me there. Or shadow, we didn't say save, right? Uh, anyways, here's the second attempt. Uh, this time I um, come back and get a little bit more right rudder sooner, and uh, am able to go down the runway somewhat straight uh, with smaller input feeds on the rudders. And then chopping the throttle, letting that tail wheel drop back down to the ground. Coming in here, uh, the tail wheel, it actually is kind of fixed up to 30 degrees one way or the other. And then once you get past that and you turn sharp, it becomes free castering. And you can really do some pretty tight 360s, which is a blast. You gotta make sure you're not hitting anything back there, but uh, yeah, it's a unique feeling. Here's the first takeoff attempt. Throttle pushing forward. I got some crosswind control in there and I'm rotating. Uh, I forget to take out the crosswind control as a, you know, learning something new, you kind of get saturated. So a basic crosswind control that I normally have no problem pulling out that I had forgotten because I was worried about ground looping and keeping it, uh, keeping the nose from hitting the pavement. Anyways, going up here, you look at the ball definitely need to use a little more uh, right rudder. It's a consistent theme. Right rudder, right rudder for my instructor a lot. Learning to fly it under slow flight, just want to know how it handles maneuvers uh, close to stall. Coming up here, you see it. This doesn't have a stall warning horn. It has a stall warning light. You see the little light on the dash and I'm trying to get it to stall. Leading off speed, just feeling how the controls are at low speed. Here's my second attempt. Again, pulling back, uh, trying to get a stall. Get it to stall a little bit, kind of just break free a little bit. And then Mike, the instructor, says, Here, I'll show you what a stall is. Uh, when he grabs the uh, brace and the windshield, you know it's going to be a good one. And he was able to get it to definitely break free uh, a lot more. So just getting used to the airplane, how it feels, uh, definitely so much more rudder input to keep it coordinated. Some of the best instruction here I was getting when I was traveling to a dirt strip uh, was kind of think about the aileron, the yoke, and the rudder pedals being attached. So anytime you turn a little bit to the left, you're going to do left rudder. Anytime you do right, right rudder, you need to stay on top of it a lot more than uh, when you get the death rate. Here we're coming in and uh, trying to put in, there's two notch of flaps on here. First notch is 20 degrees, second is 40 degrees. For some reason, at higher speeds, it does not want to go into full flaps. So I'm just gonna land here with 20 degrees of flaps. Got a little bit of crosswind here, so put a little crosswind control in. I'm gonna start off with uh, three point landings. Those are kind of the first landings you learn that are easier to do than uh, tail wheel landings. Or actually, I'm sorry, wheel landings. So I'm coming in here, bleeding off my speed, and uh, getting that nose up. You don't have a very good sight picture, so you're kind of looking out the side and uh, trying to hit the mains and the tail wheel at the same time. I always have a tendency to land left of center line and uh, no difference here the first time. I need a little bit more right rudder and uh, I need to affect or counterbalance that crosswind control using ailerons to keep my, my drift and get back to the center line. So we went over a little bit to the left side of the runway. The instructor helped me help nudge me back to the middle. Now here's the first takeoff on this dirt strip, uh, three uniform zero, which is a Murphy Hot Springs uh, in southeast Idaho. And I never, it was late summer, uh, you see that I just continue to roll the airplane. We don't want to sit in one spot. There's some dry grasses on the runway. We don't want to start any fires, so we continue to roll. And here I'm getting the airplane configured going through my checklist out loud uh, as we're kind of rolling down. And get going here, bring the RPMs up. Again, pushing that nose for forward, which is an awkward feeling, but a uh, cool feeling all the same. And I'm gonna rotate here at about 60, so we get that, get that tail wheel up, push it forward. Got a little crosswind control in here. And we rotate about 60. When I rotate, you see again, 
and kind of left that crosswind control in there. And also I didn't use enough right rudder. And that will uh, get us uncoordinated and need to remember to get that right rudder in sooner with this Franklin motor. It's 220 horse. It's got quite a bit of P factor when you're uh, at full RPM. Here's my second landing, and uh, this I love slips. And my instructor originally started off teaching me how to slip. Uh, when he started flying, the airplanes didn't have flaps, I guess. And so he was <laughs> he always he taught me to slip early on, and they're fun. You can really drop a lot of uh, altitude quick, uh, but it is an uncoordinated flight on purpose. You're doing full rudder opp opposite ailerons. And so when you're taking passengers, it's not pleasant for them, and they don't expect it. And so I don't get to do a lot of slips, except when I'm by myself. So we throw it into a slip, we drop the altitude we need. Uh, we have crosswind control in again. Actually, no, I think the, the wind had changed direction. It's blowing right down, so less crosswind control. I'm trying to get it to bleed off speed and set down on the mains and the tail wheel at the same time. Here, I plopped it down a little bit. This small has great suspension. It can get a lot. Uh, this is a bumpy runway, but uh, I can do better than that. And uh, this time I actually keep it pretty much on the center line. Not a lot of correction here, but uh, need to uh, bring it down a little bit softer. You can see my instructor saying, yeah, you kind of blocked it on the, on the wheels. My battery died, so this concludes the video for session two. We'll now move on to session three where we are sticking around uniform 03 in the pattern and trying out some wheel landings. See you then.